God, you are so good to us, so just and righteous and altogether lovely. More to be desired, God, than gold, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey, than the honeycomb. So, Father, we just we just tell you tonight that we love you, King Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. If you got a Bible, Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. And let's look at verse 6. Yes. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. Jesus' name. Everybody have a good week? Yes. Yeah, great. Right. Oh, awesome. Yes. Awesome. Colossians 2, verse 6. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Verse 7. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. All right, let's read that verse again. Verse 7. Rooted and built up in him, established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Do y'all see verse 7 there? What do you got to do? Be rooted and Ground. built up, grounded. Means you got to do something. Just like we were talking about a few minutes ago, work. You got to do something. In order to grow something, in order to find something, in order to, to catch a fish, you got to prepare it. You got to do something. You got to go out there to catch the fish. Work has to be involved. In order for there to be growth, there's work in Jesus. How many of us want to grow into maturity in Jesus and be something he's proud of when he returns for you? I think that's a generally a, a yes across the board for those of us here. But in order to do that, you got to be rooted and grounded. Rooted and grounded means you got to go deep. Rooted and grounded means you're solid. Rooted and grounded means when a storm comes, you're not wavering. Your eyes are not on man. Your eyes are on Jesus. And, and being built up in Jesus and established in the faith as you were taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Abounding. What does that mean to abound in something? Overflow. To, 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 mm. what, what's a good word? It means abundance. Abundantly. Mm. To, to the increase of, in thanksgiving, the increase of Jesus and, and increasing in him and overabundantly of even what's needed. The expounding of Christ in you. And as we were saying earlier, how blessed we are. I want you to think not where you desire to be, but where are you now as opposed to where you started? However many years ago, when you, when you got it right with Jesus, when you surrendered completely to Jesus, when you gave it all to Jesus, whether that was in a Sunday school room or a, a vacation Bible school or in a house somewhere, a church, wherever it was, driving down the road on a tractor somewhere. When, that day when you got real with Jesus, how much have you grown since then? I would say, dare say, most of us in this room, we've grown. But it's something that you had to focus on. Like when you have an opportunity to put your mouth on something and you keep your mouth closed, that's a choice and a decision you made, right? It's called maturing. It's called growing. It's called coming into something that you weren't yesterday. It's, it's growth. There's got to be growth. In order to abound in faith and abound in the things of God, there has got to be growth. And I believe what we're going through now even the finances around us, the way things are crumbling, the way things are cost a whole lot more now. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but $100 now doesn't buy very much. <clears throat> Titus and I went to the, to the store the other day to get some stuff. And, man, we got a lasagna and some bread and some this and that, some ranch. And the next thing we know, we was over a $100 bill. And, whew, used to, $100 bill, you could buy a whole, a whole basket full of groceries. Now you might have a bag or two, depending on what you're getting. That's true. Right? But in order to abound, it means my finances have to increase. It means there's got to be increase on things. And, and again, in the things of God, sometimes it takes more to walk through life than it did yesterday. Sometimes it takes more faith than it did yesterday. Sometimes we come against things that we didn't face yesterday, and it takes more of the things of God evident in your life to get through it. Yeah. Right or wrong? Right. Or maybe I'm the only one that, that no. bumps up against stuff that was a little stronger today than it was yesterday. 
Y'all don't bump up against things. It takes a little more faith and a little more ump and gusto to get through things than it did yesterday or earlier today or when you felt right and you felt good about something. Like when you wake up in the morning, you got some energy and you tackle a job. Well, when it's seven o'clock at night and you got to tackle something, you don't have that little ump anymore. Sometimes you got to dig deep. We actually had this conversation today. Sometimes you got to dig deep. You got to dig deeper than you were in order to get through whatever it is you're looking at. It's the same way walking with Jesus. It's the same way of getting through life and getting through trials and situations and family and things that they did that now you got to walk through. Right? right? It's, it's like I say all the time. People around me, my family, make decisions that I'm supposed to be happy about. And I'm going to do this and now you're going to be happy about it. Y'all don't have any of those kind of people, do you? Well, let me tell you about how people are. They don't ask your opinion. They just do things, and then you're supposed to be happy with what they did. It don't always work that way, does it? People, people make decisions, and now when you're not happy in the world we live in now, it's just they get offended because you're not happy about their decision. But I'm glad y'all don't have anybody in y'all's life like that. But y'all pray for those of us that do. Those of us that have family that make decisions concerning you. But not anyway. Verse 8. Beware of what? Lest anyone does what? Cheat you. The philosophy. Empty the seed according to traditions of men. According to the basic principles of the world. Not according to Christ. In other words, you better be careful what you follow. Verse 9. For in him. All right, right here. In him. In whom? In Christ. Dwells what? All the what? Fullness of Godhead bodily. Verse 10. And you are complete in him. Who is the head of all principality and power? All right, start with the end of that verse. Who's the head of all principality and power? Him. Who's him? Christ. Okay. In Christ... We part right, right ahead of that. It's above all principalities and powers. Who's complete in him? Verse 10. Believers. You are. You. You are what? Complete in Christ. Who's the head of all principalities and power? Okay? Of all that we're fighting against, of all that we're struggling against, and all the demonics out there, the, the things of the enemy, who's the head of it? Who's over it? And who are you complete in? The one that's over all that. Okay? Verse 9, back to it. For in him dwells all the fullness of Godhead bodily. In the godly form, Jesus was the perfect representation of the triuneness in physical form. Right or wrong? Mm -hmm. And in him, you are complete. Mm -hmm. And in him, he is the head over all principalities and powers. Correct? So in him, who has authority and power over all of that? We do. But again, it's something you got to grow into and develop. What Brother Gary knows about aluminum, he didn't know when he was 19 years old. What Miss Karen knows about, about dealing with people and the things of life and, and business and jobs, she didn't know at 19. The things that, that Brother Jay knows, he didn't know at 19, 20. He didn't know at 40. He's growing. He's growing into something. He's, he's, he's doing a job now that he probably thought he would never do. And probably would have laughed at you 30 years ago if he'd have told him. Or 20 years ago if you'd have told him what he would be doing in 20 years, he'd probably laughed at you. But he grew into something because God spoke, God maneuvered, God changed him. And here we go, following the will of God. But in that's got to be growth. Because everything he's done up to this point has got him to where he's at, where he can he can manage that school and he can be over the maintenance and do and work people and all the things and all the disaster reliefs and all the things that he's done over the years prepared him for something that he never saw coming. The things that you've done prepared you for what you never saw coming. God's preparing him for things in 20 years if God tarries that he has no clue that are coming at him that he's learning now. 
Just saying, that's, that's how God, there's growth, there's got to be growth, but in Him is completeness. In Him there is fullness. Look at John chapter 5. John chapter 5, and let's look at verse uh, 37. John 5, 37. The Father Himself who sent me, Jesus, has testified of me, Jesus. You've neither heard His voice at any time nor seen His form. Talking about the Father. Verse 38. But you do not have His word, the Father's abiding in you, because whom He sent, Jesus, you do not believe. Verse 39. You search the Scriptures, for in the Scriptures you think you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me. In this right here, is there eternal life in this right here? It's in Jesus. But in the church, what do we value more? This or Jesus? I've done that in church and had people get up and go pick it up because they were offended that I dropped the Bible. Actually, it happened last week. He just didn't get up. I throwed it. You don't throw this because it's well, it is precious. But that which lives in me is more precious than this because this tells me how to get to that which lives in me. This does not save me. This tells me how to be saved. Is this precious? Absolutely. But is God offended if I do that? But if I don't hide it here, is he offended? What keeps me from sinning? Having this in my house? No. no. Why? Because we've got 20 of them in all of our homes and five of them on each of our devices. Mama, how many Bibles you got on your tablet? Several. Mm -hmm. Bible, you got several on yours too? Just one? You don't have You probably got that loud Bible on yours, don't you? That amplified? Jay, how many hard copies you got at your house? See, I know you, you ain't going to have a bunch on your device, but I know how many you're going to have at your house. Yeah. Bunch. Yeah. Well, he for sure going to make it. So he got a dozen Bibles at his house. Hard copy. Hard copies. Yeah. Some of them's probably large print, small print, all kinds of versions in them. For sure, he's going to make it. Because he got a bunch of Bibles. Not getting him to heaven. Now, if we read that and obey that, then yeah. But to have this in my house, well, I, Jay, remember all them times in the prison? All those years and all the stories we heard of guys that were just Jesus, Jesus, and they when they got released, they left their Bible laying on the bed? Mm -hmm. I mean, it happens all the time. Never they leave it on the bed. Never hear from them again. I don't need that anymore. Oh. And in several of them, it would be a few months, and here they come right back in there. What you doing back in here? Well, I messed up. No, you didn't mess up. You sinned. You don't mess up. You sinned. The wages of sin is dead. The wages of sin get you in prison sometimes. Right? But again, okay, Jesus is saying his voice, the Father's voice, but you don't know him. You don't know his voice. And he said, this does not save you, but this tells about me, Jesus. This right here is my road map. This right here, in fact, we were, we were somewhere yesterday and a lady made a comment, I don't know how we got there, about GPS and if I had to follow a, an old map, I probably couldn't get there because I can't hardly read one of them things. Well, nowadays, they wouldn't know how to read with Rand McNally if you had to. Y'all remember Rand McNally's? I don't know what that is. Don't even know what that is, see? If you can't pull it up here and tell it and send me your address, they ain't going to find it. But, man, I remember we would go on a trip and the whole countertop turned into a mountain. 
and it had pages. Flip this page, where we headed to Dallas, and Mama would get the thing out, we're gonna go right here. My Uncle David, he would be on the table and tell everybody, all right, We'll take the highway, such and such, and he'd have it all mapped out. Here we go, and it, you've got to take, we'd be looking at, you know, Houston or Dallas or, or uh, Denver, somewhere you don't know, and looking at the, you know, this goes around the city, and we've got to take this around, and you got to walk over here because the map's so big. I remember those days. <laughs> and you got to go over here, and I think if we, and God forbid if there's road construction, I, I'm telling you, Mom would be sitting in the front seat. Daddy be driving. Just tell me where I'm going. The whole front seat would turn into a map. <laughs> Trying to fold that thing. Where you could see it. Y'all remember? But yet, yeah, you had to fold it back because you ain't got so much space in the front seat. You got that pencil. <laughs> Y'all remember that? Yeah. Books. Brand McDowell's. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the new updated one would come out with the new roads on it, you know, and that was the thing. You had to have two things, the Rand McNally and the Farmer's Almanac. Life just didn't exist without the Farmer's Almanac. They don't even know what the Farmer's Almanac is, but Papa Beard, his daddy, lived by the Farmer's Almanac. You planted by that Farmer's Almanac. But daddy said, we're gonna plant when I'm off. <laughs> When it ain't raining and I'm off, that's when we plant, Daddy. <laughs> and then peas wouldn't come, I told you. She was planted. <laughs> Look, here's your farmer's almanac. Here's your Rand McNally. Here is, here is how you get there. This is where we learn. And then it's got to move you in here where the Holy Ghost is now speaking to you and maneuvering you and changing you because I am so, I disdain the idea that people in a church cannot be led by the Spirit, that only the pastor and the elders can be led by the Spirit. I disdain that. What we've got to be growing up is people that know how to hear the voice of God and can be obedient to the voice of God without preachers. Amen. Just saying, we've got to get to the point where there's maturity in the church as a whole and there's unity and coming together and fighting together but not fighting each other. And, and I believe that God is wanting us to get to a, a place where you're stop jockeying for position and it's about relationship with Jesus. This whole, I'm better than you, and no, come on, let me deal, help you while you're learning how to grow up and how you're, I don't know. I guess what I'm trying to say is, may God bring us to maturity to help people to come into maturity. Because how frustrating is it to deal with people that are frustrating? Maybe y'all don't deal with anybody that's frustrating. I, it's like it's like us working on that house up there. It's so much easier for me to just do it than to let him figure out how to do it. Last night he was working on something. It took him two hours, and it still we still had problems. Still didn't get finished with it. I'd have had it done a long time ago, but he wouldn't have learned anything. And it's all about learning. Because how will he be able to do if he doesn't mess up on it? Like, we were installing some lights Wednesday. He was helping me. So when you got somebody helping you and they're staying ahead of you, they're putting it together before you get there. Well, he, he had to go do something else. Well, it left me to assemble the last two lights. So what we have is we got one hanging here, one hanging here, one hanging here over an island like this. And they're all separate. And so he put together the first one and... We put it together. Here we go. Well, he goes to leave. Well, now I got to do the last two. I ain't nothing to this. I put them together. Here we go. I went to hang it, and I didn't have part of it on there. I had to take it all back apart, back down, because I had been relying on him. Well, by the, the next one, I had it together and do it, because I saw what I did wrong. It's the same way in life. A preacher cannot walk it out for you. He can help you. He can do and the Holy Ghost can help you and do, but you got to walk it out. you got to figure this out. 
And, and, and I believe Jesus is saying here, I want you to look at verse uh, 44. Or look at 41. I do not receive honor from men, but I know you, that you do not have the love of God in you. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me, but other comes in his own name. Him you will receive, 44. How can you believe who receive honor from one another and do not seek the honor that comes from the only God? It's not about Jay telling me you're doing good. It's not about my dad telling me I'm doing good. It's not about me telling Titus he's doing good. It's about him pleasing the Father. It's about you pleasing the Father. Not a preacher, not an elder, not a whoever. It's about you and Jesus because the reality is that on that day, every, every one of us are going to stand before God and give account. What did you do for Jesus? Did you grow into maturity? Did you grow into relation with him? Did we learn how to abide in him? Did we learn what it is to be intimate with Jesus? Not to go preach, not to see people healed, not to see people saved. Did you grow into maturity in him? In relationship with him. Does that make sense, what I'm asking? Because we try to focus on the works, and works are important. But I'm telling you this, that time at the feet of Jesus is more important than the works. Because if you don't know him, you're not getting in. Because if you don't know him, you're a worker of iniquity anyway. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I don't know you. It's about knowing him. It's about growing into a relationship with him. It's about his approval over your approval of me. If I don't have his approval, your approval doesn't matter. Even my own parents, my own grandmother, if they say you're doing a good job, but Jesus says I'm not, their approval doesn't matter. If I tell him, man, you're doing great, but he knows he's not with Jesus, then my approval don't matter. I'm telling you, stop trying to get the approval of, of a man and get the approval of heaven. At the end of it all, well done. At the end of it all, good job from Jesus is more important than the accolades of man. It's more important than you telling me good, bad, or indifferent. It, it's more important for Jesus to be proud of you and the Father to go well done than it is everybody and a brother going, man, look at this guy. Look at what you're doing. Look at, look at where God has brought him. Man, the anointing on his life. Oh, my goodness, Titus. Oh, my goodness, man. Man, I just see it on that young man. Man, where God's going to take him. Not if he's not obedient and not if he don't grow in relation. You can have all the, you can have all the, the accolades of man and still die and go to hell. If you don't have relation, and I'm asking you, we're coming into a season of Thanksgiving and Christmas to celebrating the birth of Christ and all that's great. But if you don't know him, what's it worth celebrating? If we don't know him, then, then what are we celebrating? What is it worth if we're not drawing near? Look at John chapter 16. John 16, look at verse 31. John, six, John 16, 31. Jesus answers them, Do you now believe? 32. Indeed, the hour is coming, and yes, has now come, that you will be scattered, each to his own, and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. Would you just pause right there for a minute? The end of verse 32. Jesus says, Y'all are all about to be scattered, but I'm not alone. Why? Because the Father's with me. Is the presence of God enough? Knowing that you are in right standing with God. Brother Gary, if you don't ever get to go to another Honduras, another, you don't get to help anybody, you don't get to see and get stories of what God has done, but yet knowing you're in right relationship with the Father, is that enough? Mm -hmm. 
Is it? For Titus, is it enough? Because all he knows is watching me and others go and do and stories and he wants his own stories. But before you get your own stories, you've got to be good with I am in right relationship with the Father and that's enough. Because everything comes out of that. At the end of it all, if I don't ever preach, if I don't ever do, but yet I am faithful. If, if one day he gets married and he has kids and he's faithful to his wife and he's faithful to his children and he raises his children to be like Jesus and he has a good name and he raises his children to be like Jesus, is that enough? Because if it's not, what are we doing? Is it enough to be faithful to your spouse? To be faithful at work and to give 100% at work and to do the things you're supposed to do, no matter people's opinion, no matter what they're their aim and their goal and their shiftiness is, I am in right standing with God. If I died right now, I'm happy to meet him because I am in right relationship with the Father. I may not have what I would like to have. I may not have all the toys I would like to have. I may not have what somebody else has, but I am in right relationship with the Father. I love him. He loves me. I abide in him. He abides in me. What else is there? To be known as a man that was faithful to his wife for however many years he would be married. That raised up his children to the very best of his ability to love Jesus. To raise up godly men and godly daughters to be godly wives and not lose them to the spirit of the age. I don't know what I'm talking about. Whatever that may be and when he's around, but right now we know what, what that is. LGBTQ, RST, LMNOP, whatever's out there. I'm going to be a pencil. I identify as a pencil. I heard about that one the other day. I identify as a mermaid. I identify as a whatever it may be. I identify as. I heard about one that I'm a cat. We need cat litter in the, in the, in the bathrooms because I'm a cat. I just... It just floors me the things that are out there right now. If he keeps his children from that, what greater calling is there? Then a man to love his wife as Christ loves the church. For a man to raise up a, rear up a, a godly generation from his lineage, what greater calling can there be than to teach them how to seek and hear heaven? Or is it more important to reach the 10,000s and to, to, to reach the whatevers and to travel and to do? If you don't have that at home, then what do you have? I'm just telling you, it is time for the church to focus on what matters. We've got to shore up our homes. We're losing our, our preachers. We're losing, our, we're losing so many every day they're quitting. They're falling into adultery and fornication. They're falling into uh, embezzlement. They're doing all sorts of things. And we're doing it to ourselves because somewhere something got out of order. Something somewhere got out. It didn't fall in one day. And so you, it, it's. It, I'm just telling you, we've got to shore up the right relationship with the Father. To know tonight, I am in love with Jesus. He is in love with me. I am in right standing with the Father. What greater peace can there be than to lay down and be in right relationship with the King of all eternity and go to sleep? Tell me if there's anything that carries more peace than that. No matter what's in the bank or not in the bank, no matter what the energy bill is or is not, no matter what, 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 I am in right standing with the I am. What greater peace can there be? 
The world is looking for happiness. The world is looking for peace. And it's found in being in right relationship with Jesus. It really is. At 97 years old to 17. There's a whole lot of age bracket right there in between. 80 years roughly. That they both can lay down and go to sleep tonight in peace. Knowing I am in right relationship with the king of eternity. The one who speaks and nothing was there and now everything exists off of his word. That the very essence that holds everything together is him. And I am in right relationship with him. I'm telling you, what greater peace can there be? Everything else comes out of that. It, are there bills? Oh yeah. Are there... Are there things you've got to negotiate through? Oh, yeah. But it all comes out of my relationship with him. Okay? Real life. How many of us are faced with bills and things pretty constantly? And some of it we never saw coming. You ever had something just hit you sideways you didn't know was coming? You got a hike in your insurance on your house? And then the next year you got another hike because you didn't know that one was coming. That makes for interesting phone calls on that. Yeah. Or when you're going down the road, last week we was headed to Texas to preach and out of the blue, oh, by the way, uh, Gracie's uh, next semester, uh, they're about to open registration for the next semester. Oh, that's nice. No, like in a week. By the way, she's going to want to get registered in a week or two. <clears throat> uh huh. And about how much is that again? Six thousand or what? That ain't till December, right? Well, she's going to want to register because she wants to get her room so she can be with so and so and so and so. I wasn't ready for that. So we're driving. Well, I was, that's good. And I got one year left with her. All right. And then if he goes, that's thirteen thousand dollars next by next June, July. And in the November of next year, that's another thirteen with both of them. Thirteen thousand dollars. You thought it cost a lot when I went, didn't you? Three grand. Yeah, I try about sixty-five hundred now. That's twenty six thousand dollars. No, I'm a judge. And that's just that bill. That's not life. That's not insurances on all these yahoos and cell phones and all the things and all the life and all the hey hey we we need and we need to go and we need and we need yeah y'all like to eat too don't you. And I'm going to buy you five kernels of corn. You better go kill you a deer. <laughs> Here's the thing about it. All of that, it will come. God has been faithful up to this point. He will not stop being faithful today. It will come. It will. Because I am in covenant with him. Every semester... Their, their bill has been paid before they ever started and I can't tell you how. It just comes. Because God is a covenant keeping God. I don't want him fretting over it. I don't want him worried about it. I want him to go, if he goes there and be happy and be a Jesus and go enjoy it. Let me worry about it. Because I'm going to give it to Father and let him worry about it. Are you following me? Because all of it's going to come out of my relationship with him. It's not for him to fret over. When it's his turn and he's got kids and now it's $12,000 a semester, that's between him and Jesus to figure it out. But for now, it's not between him and Jesus. It's between me and Jesus. I don't want him fretting over it. I need to show him how to walk it out by faith and by working and doing my part and letting God meet me. But I'm telling you, it all comes out of tonight. I'm going to lay down 
and I'm going to sleep in peace, and I'm not going to fret over it because I am in right standing with the King of Eternity. And I'm going to tell him about it. Hey, God, you know, in about two weeks, Gracie's going to get registered. As a matter of fact, I already told him. I'm going to get registered. I need some money. It will come. It will. It always does. Because it's in my relationship with him. Does that make sense? It's, you know, the miracles are great. The testimonies are awesome. But I'm telling you, there is so much peace in knowing I am in right standing with God. No matter age, no matter where you've been, no matter what you've been through, I am in right standing with God. I am in right standing with God. Y'all, that is, there is so much weightiness on there. There is so much peace. There's so much of just that passes as the Bible says, all understanding to know I'm in love with him and he's in love with me. So God, I ask you, let us fall deeper and more intimately in love. Show us, call us, let us know the understanding of your heart over our life. Let us know the depths of you're in the Father, and the Father's in you, and you're in us. We can ask whatever we will, according to your will, and it shall be done for us by our Father who is in heaven. So our Father who art in heaven, hallowed or holy is your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord of glory bless you. May he keep you. And may the countenance of God radiate upon you and bring you peace. In Jesus' name, Jesus is king. And the devil is still a liar. Y'all be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus.